Despite this peaceful grazing scene, lurking within these animals and on the ground could be a nasty parasite. The liver fluke is a parasitic flatworm that can cause significant disease and production losses in grazing animals. The fluke has a complicated life cycle involving a tiny mud snail, so fluke is typically found on low-lying boggy or fluky ground. Fluke also thrive in climatic conditions that suit the snail, so mild winters and warm wet summers. Let's take a closer look. Here are the adult parasites living happily in the host's liver. The adult fluke lay lots of eggs which pass out in the faeces. After a few weeks, depending on the weather, the eggs hatch to release a little larval stage called a myricidium, which swims off in search of its mud snail host. Once inside the snail, the parasite develops and multiplies. A few weeks later, it will emerge from the snail as the next larval stage, the cercaria. These larvae go on to form the infectious liver fluke cysts on blades of grass, and it is these cysts that sheep and cattle inadvertently eat while grazing. Once inside the host animal, the baby fluke hatch out from their cysts and burrow through the wall of the intestine and go off in search of the liver. Once there, they do their best to chew that to pieces, and this is how they cause disease. Immature fluke can cause a lot of damage, especially in sheep, and can be fatal. A build-up of adult fluke in the bile ducts also causes problems and can result in reduced weight gain but also reduced milk yield in dairy animals, reduced growth rates, and reduced scanning rates in breeding animals. Just to complicate things further, liver fluke also infects wildlife, most notably deer and rabbits, so these can keep the life cycle going in the absence of livestock, or even if the livestock have been successfully treated. There is a basic seasonality to the liver fluke life cycle, with adult fluke shedding eggs in spring, snails becoming infected in the summer, animals ingesting fluke cysts in the autumn and showing disease production effects in winter. Having said that, we do sometimes see liver fluke disease out of season and fluke risk can vary from year to year, from farm to farm and even from field to field. So how would you know if your animals had fluke? There are a number of signs to look out for in live animals, specifically ill thrift, anemia, and bottle jaw. Also investigate any sudden deaths or fallen stock and always ask if any carcasses have shown signs of liver fluke infection at point of slaughter. In terms of diagnostic options, it is possible to test blood or milk for the presence of antibodies against liver fluke. This is a useful test in young, first season animals. But most testing involves looking for the presence of liver fluke eggs in faecal samples but this only tells you that there are adult fluke present. A new test, the coproantigen test, can detect fluke in faeces a few weeks before eggs appear and is now being offered by some of the commercial testing labs. Ask your vet for details. When it comes to fluke treatment, there are many important points to remember. Not all wormers will kill fluke, so a chemical with activity against liver fluke, a flucicide, should be used when fluke is the issue. None of the fluke drugs are long-acting, so animals can easily become reinfected after treatment. It may be necessary to administer a follow-up treatment and move animals to a low-risk pasture. Remember, not all fluke drugs kill all stages of fluke. Some only kill adults. Some kill immatures and adults. Only one product, triclobendazole, can kill all stages. Unfortunately, we are hearing increasing reports of triclobendazole resistance, so we must be very careful with this valuable product and only use it when we need to and when we know it will be effective. To check how well products are working on your farm, testing faecal samples three weeks after treatment would be a good place to start, but discuss this with your vet. It is important to know which active ingredient is in any product being used and that you use the right product for the right animals at the right dose, at the right time. In addition, there are several practical management options for liver fluke control. It's important to consider what's likely to be happening throughout the grazing season and adopt this four-point plan. 
In spring, make sure all animals, whether wintered outdoors or housed, are treated with an effective flucicide that kills adults and stops them laying eggs which could infect the snails. In summer, reduce potential snail habitat by creating effective drainage, fixing leaky water troughs and rolling poached areas. In autumn, prevent your animals from grazing potentially fluky parts of your farm with fencing. In winter, strategically treat any animals in need with an appropriate chemical flucicide. Housing represents a good opportunity to kill parasites without reinfection occurring. It is also important to follow biosecurity guidelines throughout the year to avoid bringing fluke, or worse still, resistant fluke, onto a farm that previously didn't have it. An effective flucicide treatment and avoidance of potential snail habitat are recommended for all incoming or returning livestock. So, liver fluke control has become a year-round issue. Make the best use of all available information. Farm fluke history, diagnostic test results, abattoir returns, keep an eye on the weather, and always work with your vet or animal health advisor to come up with a fluke control plan tailored to your farm, because every farm is different. At Morden, we are continuing to research into many key livestock diseases, including fluke, focusing on diagnostics, vaccines and disease control strategies, all aimed at improving disease prevention in our flocks and herds. For more information, please ask your anthelmintic prescriber or visit our website.